Howdy, it's Tubal Kane again, and this is Machine Shop Tips number 282 entitled How to Run a Lathe Books. I have in front of me here six uh, copies, six editions of the ubiquitous South Bend How to Run a Lathe Book, and you know, I've used this as a reference for years and years, both as a machinist and as a teacher, and as a supplemental textbook. Uh, as a teacher and there's just millions of these in print in different languages Portuguese and Spanish and and uh, French and I don't know what all and this was originally put out many many years ago by the South Bend Lathe Company which was founded by the O'Brien brothers and you know the O'Brien brothers were twins identical twins so identical in fact that the only way you could tell John from Miles was to look for the one missing a finger, and that was Miles, and I suppose he lost it in a South Bend lathe, you think? Anyway, uh, they decided that they needed a reference uh, for these people uh, to tr try to learn uh, how to run a lathe. So here's uh, already the 33rd edition. This is the oldest one that I've got, and that's from 19... Uh, 37 and they still have the O'Brien boys names on there and this has been updated and upgraded and edited and revised every year not every year but every edition I don't think it's uh, being printed anymore except in aftermarket stuff now here's a well-worn copy that is uh, 42nd edition from 1942 And this red one here, and by the way, I don't have any of these for sale, so please don't ask. Why do I have so many? I keep one in the bedroom, I keep one by the computer, I keep one by my couch, keep one in each car, and one in the bathroom even. Here's the 45th edition, 1944, and what I don't get about this is that uh, finally they put the volume number out here. It says volume 1, but I guess it got so thick that they went with two volumes. I'm not real sure on that, but uh, that's kind of a interesting one. And then these later editions here, 1952 and then 58, this was uh, edition 53, belonged to Cornelius Hogan. And there's a love note in here to his girlfriend. Says, I love ya. So, it was used for that as well. This is the one that I had when I was in high school that my dad, the teacher, uh, gave to each of us. And I think we either paid 50 cents or a, or a dollar at the school bookstore for that. It wasn't very much. And this is one that I used when I was first teaching. And I think it's the very last edition before the, it went into reprints. And by then it was Amstead Industries, which I think was the downfall. But this is the 1966 edition, and finally they put safety glasses on uh, on someone. Here's yours truly, Tubal Cain, in about the mid-70s. I had already been teaching for about 10 years, and I'm in the shop, and all this equipment was sold within 10 years after this picture. And I am leaning against a Sheldon lathe. I had mainly Sheldon lathes in there, and off to the side here is a do-all surface grinder. Big old Rockford Shaper right there. And then way behind me is a Greaves Horizontal Mill. A bit dorky, don't you agree? But during that era, I was already using this as my reference. Now, you can get copies of this in reprints like this, or you can get all of these originals on eBay. They're always running about ten or twelve dollars, but get yourself one of those or a reprint here. And this is the Lindsay reprint from the 1942 edition. And you know, Lindsay is no longer in business, but there's his catalog. I think this is the last one he printed, which was about 19 or rather 2012 is when he sold out. I wish I'd have gone to visit him because he only lived about a hundred miles from me. But uh, he apparently was a funny man, too, because he had a lot of funny uh, information in his catalog. Uh, here's a trivia question. The expression on this man's face, what do we call a man that is doing that? Or what is that expression? See if you know what that means. Put your comments 
your answer in the comments. But these are interesting to look at. He had an awful lot of metalworking books. So watch for a Lindsay reprint. And this was also a Lindsay reprint here of some of the uh, South Bend lathe pamphlets. And they had many, many pamphlets on lathe maintenance, oiling, setting up the lathe, leveling the, the lathe. And some were aimed more at specific areas like auto mechanics and turning armatures and, and things like that. So see if you can find uh, some of that information on the internet. And I think you can. And be sure and go to, uh, if I can find it here in front of me, I'm sure that you have already been to Keith Rucker's Vintage Machinery site. And there's the WW address. And you can get, uh, you can download the 1937 edition of How to Run a Lathe free. I suppose print it out if you have a notion to. So check that out. This is another Lindsay reprint here of by the Sheldon Company. And again, I, you saw me standing moments ago uh, alongside of a Sheldon lathe. They were excellent lathes made in Chicago. And this was the Sheldon uh, book called The Care and Operation of a Lathe. So you might find this on the internet. And it's uh, also about a quarter inch thick and uh, very well done. So if you have a Sheldon lathe, and there's probably a lot of those Sheldon lathes around here in the Midwest. You might want to try to find a copy of that. And I bought that at a flea market for nine dollars and zero cents, I guess. Even has an ISBN number. Remember that the South Bend books are uh, well, South Bend is owned by the Grizzly Company, so I don't know about the rights on those or the copyrights. This is the Atlas Lathe book, and uh, you may have a copy that says Sears Craftsman on it, and they're exactly the same with a different cover. And uh, this book is every bit as good as the South Bend book, in some ways better. And it's spiral bound, so it opens and it lays flat, and it's uh, got the thumb index. And it really is just a wonderful book on how to use the lathe, and there's a lot of charts and other information in there as well. So. So find a copy of that, and I've talked about this in some of my other videos, but this is really a, a great book put out by Sears or Atlas Lathe. Maybe it's still even in print, I do not know, because Atlas Clausing is still around. So these are some of the best resources that you will find if you are working on a lathe. Now remember, I also offer a course entitled How to Run a Lathe, and it's very loosely organized around the South Bend book. And as a matter of fact, I adopted the name How to Run a Lathe by Tubal Cain. A few moments ago, I mentioned that Logan Lathes did not have a book out. But rather than a book, they had this uh, set of instructions along with uh, the parts list. And I suppose one of these came with each one of their lathes. I'm not sure. Someone sent this to me, and it's just a loose leaf in nature. By the way, Logan is, uh, is called Logan Actuator now, and you can still get man this manual, I think, from them, because it's, it's marked here 200 series lathes. And uh, I suppose it's a reprint, but anyway, the first few pages here are of uh, Logan lathes and how to run them, how to set them up, the controls, not the detail that you're going to find in the other book, but yet, you know, there's the gears. So it is a, a bit of a manual, not, not what we're used to, but it's, it's pretty nice. And in the back is the parts list for all the different parts for that model of a Logan lathe. So you can get that either on the internet or from Logan Actuator if you have a Logan lathe. And there are an awful lot of these Logan lathes out also sold under the Montgomery Ward badge. Well, this completes, completes this video on uh, lathe books, how to run a lathe books. And this is Tubal Cain saying so long for now, and I'll see you in the next video.